welcome to another cook along. So really excited to have you here tonight um, and we're doing a red wine chicken. I think you could probably call it like a cacciatore type chicken but I'm just calling it red wine chicken. Um, so we're going to get started with the food processor. So if you haven't already got your food pro out make sure you've got that ready to go um, and we're going to use our two millimeter slicing blade and our four millimeter slicing blade. So make sure you've got those ready. Um, and then we're gonna pop everything into, of course, our beautiful stainless steel bowl. So I'll give you all a few minutes just to get on, get settled, get your food pros ready to go. Um, and um, yeah, we'll see who else is gonna join us. So let us know where you're joining us from um, tonight. We always love to know that. Um, let us know how you're enjoying, if you're in Sydney and Melbourne, the lockdown and what you're doing to keep yourself entertained. I think a lot of cooking's going on at the moment, which is why I love the fact that I own a cook expert because it really is keeping me occupied. So coming up with lots of new things. So um, if you've got anything that you've discovered or something that you've cooked recently that you thought was amazing, feel free to share it with us. We always love um, you know new ideas and see what's what's going on out there and what everybody's doing. Um, oh, I just better grab my chicken out because that would help. There's always the one thing. Seems like it's right behind me. Um, it is a red wine chicken, so we do need chicken. Okay, so um, I think we've probably got everyone ready to go and everyone's jumped on and we'll get ready. Are you ready to go? Okay, so what we're going to start with is I've got... Um, you to get the echelots. So these are the, the ones I'm talking about. So um, I sent uh, a couple of large ones. I ended up having to get three because they're a little bit smaller and that's okay. And we're gonna slice those first on our two millimeter slicing blade. We're then going to change the blade to the four millimeter to do our celery and our carrot. So we'll get that going. And we're just gonna do it all into the large bowl. So don't worry about having to have um, different bowls or anything mixing, these three ingredients is what we're gonna cook first. So we're all good for that to happen. Um, so we'll get going. So I've just popped in there already my two millimeter blade for my slicing. So I'll pop that in there. I'm not gonna show you my really cool trick about how to slice a carrot on one side because I just, you know, just mucked that up last time, didn't I? Okay, so we're gonna get started and I'm going to pop in my shallots like so, get a couple of those in. Okay, are we ready? And I'm doing the two millimeter because I want them to be a lot a bit thinner than my carrots. Okay, so I'm then going to just pop, pop that out. And I'm just going to change my blade very carefully. I don't want any extra red in our red wine chicken. Okay, I'm going to pop that on so it just slots on there nicely like that. I'm going to get that little bit of onion out of there. Okay, and then we're going to slice our carrots and our celery. We'll get that going. Oh, so now we'll put that on that side because that's the side that's going to work, correct? We're just going to pop some olive oil into the bottom of our pan. I've just got the, the normal blade in there that comes with your machine. So we'll pop that olive oil in. Oh, I love the smell of celery when it's fresh, it's beautiful. 
And I'm just going to literally throw all of that straight in there. I just actually need my spatula and I'll get someone to magically appear with my spatula for me in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to just scrape all that in there beautifully. That. See, didn't see a thing, did you? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to pop that on and we're going to get that cooking. So we're going to get that all fried up and beautiful. Now this is an amazing dish on uh, mashed potato. If you wanted to do it on mash, it's a really good one to do that on. I think this kitchen bench is a little taller than my other one, so I kind of have to stand on my tippy toes. So bear with me. Okay, so we're going to go into expert. And I'm going to just pop that on to cook for about five minutes at 110 degrees. I'm going to go around this way because it's just easier. Okay, so we're five minutes. We're going to go speed three and we're going to go to 110 degrees and we'll get that on and frying up. So I am going to actually take off my cap as well because so I don't want that to sweat, I want that to start to fry up um, and we'll get that going. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add our tomato paste and our garlic and then we're going to give that a little fry up again. Um, sorry, the garlic and the thyme, just reading my notes. Um, we're gonna, and then we're going to try um, do that again. So with the thyme, I've got um, some thyme here, but I've also pulled off some of the um, little leaves from the stem, so it's up to you how you want to do it. I think you do still get quite a little bit of flavour out of the stem that you can pull out later, so if you want to leave that in, that's fine. But we're just going to let that cook away. We're already starting to steam, which we really like as well. Um, so you probably could do this recipe with um, a white wine as well, but I've chosen to do it with the red wine. I'm not a really big red wine drinker, but this dish was just absolutely beautiful. So um, it de definitely was, you know, it's not overpowering, it's not, you know, too much for you if, if you're going to give it a go. Um, but a really nice one, you know, it would even be nice if you did it with some beef or, you know, some pork fillet or something like that as well. So I think you could change it up quite a bit um, to do quite a few different things with it. So we'll let that keep cooking. So um, we've got Rose there tonight answering all of your questions. So if you've got questions, please feel free to jump on, um, you know, type out your questions for us. If you missed the start of it, I've just sliced up my uh, shallots with the two millimetre blade, uh, slicing blade, and then I have sliced up my carrot and my celery with the four millimetre slicing blade. Um, and I just did it all straight into the large, um, food pro bowl and then I've just popped it all into here with some oil to get it going so we're just going to let that fry up and then we're going to get ready to add our garlic and our thyme as well so we'll make sure that we get that in okay how are we going oh, I really do need to be taller I tried to stand on a stool but then you couldn't see my head so I couldn't work out which was the better way to go um, but you can see that that's coming together beautifully now I love the fact that we've got that induction heating and that we've got that heat really quickly and that it's so to the degree. So I've done a lot of baking. If anyone joined us on last Saturday, uh, we did baking with um, doing a huge big bread dough and then we did some pizza bases, some baguettes and um, some scrolls as well and all done in here. But what I love about that process is that we can use the induction heating up to actually prove our bread in the bowl. And that's amazing because especially was it Monday or Tuesday this week was torrential rain and 14 degrees in Sydney. Uh, so it would have been a really hard day to be able to get bread to crew. So the fact that we can do it in the machine, I think, is a really great uh, bonus for us as well. And uh, quite a unique function um, and feature with us with, um, with our magic mixers. I'm sure you all know because you're all using them, um, which is great. So we'll get that going. Um, we are also, um, you know, if there's other things that you want to see us use, so whether it's you know, getting to know the attachments. Um, you know, maybe we could do something where we just go through all of the attachments, um, just so that you can have a look and see, you know, what might be useful for you. So if that's something that you'd love to see, let us know. Um, while we're all locked down, you know, we want to be able to help you and, and you know, make those decisions of the things that you need. I think it's really great too, because, you know, with things like um, the spiralizer and the juicer, that was two more things that I could remove from my kitchen. Uh, because I could use it all in one with um, the food processor. 
So let us know if you want to see those sorts of things and we'd love to be able to do that. I know that a couple of people have asked about using the extra large steamer basket as well. So that's another one of our um, additions and add-ons you can add on with the cook expert. So we'll look at doing some things with that as well. So keep those suggestions coming and, and we'll keep getting through them and getting back to you and you know doing as much as we can to help you as we go. So we must be close now. Okay, I'm thinking seconds. Maybe 10, 9, 4, 3, 2. <laughs> okay, we must be long. Um, yeah, so, so please make sure you let us know. Um, we want to do everything we can to help you. And I think it's really nice while we've got the time uh, to actually spend a bit more time in the kitchen to actually really try things and really um, you know, get to know our machines and, and everything that we're doing. So we must be close now. Okay, are you ready? 17, 16, I don't really know. I'm just guessing. If I was close, then I'll buy a lot of ticket. Um, okay, so we're nearly done. Nearly there. And that's just going to give us um, that nice sort of fried off with that um, the shallot um, and start to soften a little bit that celery and that carrot as well. So we'll get that all happening. So if you want, oh, come and have a look and a listen. As you can hear it sizzling. I hope you can hear that. It really is starting to sizzle, which was what we wanted. So we'll get that scraped down. And this is going to really push the capacity of this bowl as well, which is great. So that's what we want to be able to do. May as well use the space. Um, and freezes really well. I have worked out. Okay, so I'm now gonna add in my chopped garlic. I have in there and I'm going to add in my thyme as well so as I mentioned I've got um, you know the, the sprigs of thyme but I've also picked off some of the leaves just to add that in there as well and then we're just going to pop that back on just for a couple of minutes and again I'm going to leave the cap off now I'm going to guess that this is the up button and I'm going to add minutes let's see how clever I can get to two minutes Two minutes, I reckon that's a bit bang on. That's how clever I'm getting, I'm doing it all backwards. Okay, so let's just fry that off quickly. Still leaving um, us on speed three, and we're just gonna get that garlic now to start to fry in there and that beautiful thyme flavor as well. So that's just for two minutes. So just the, the couple of te uh, teaspoons of garlic. If you want a garlic, you know, you know, more, you know, higher garlic flavor, then, you know, of course, add as much garlic as you want to as well. If you like that thyme flavor as well, um, you know, feel free to add more of that. It's completely just how, you know, what it tastes to you and how you actually like it. So we're going to get ready to put in our tomato paste and our wine. Um, I did mention in the recipe that I did find a Pinot Noir um, that I thought was, it wasn't too strong. It was just a nice flavour. Um, and then I can just drink the rest when you all leave. So, no, I'm joking. I don't really like bread. But that's okay. Like I said, it's beautiful in this recipe. Um, okay, so we'll get that happening. I'm going to scrape the sides down. Now then, we're going to add in our chicken um, and our stock. And I also um, make sure you've got, I've got a tablespoon of corn flour. It just needs that little bit of thickening. Um, so we'll pop that in to cook through that recipe as well. I tend to do that with my stroganoffs as well, just to give it that extra sort of thickness rather than trying to do it later, um, which sometimes doesn't always work as well. So I like to add that um, as we go in there as well. So it must be nearly done in there. Um, okay, so we've got long to go, let me guess, about 30 seconds maybe, okay, so we're going to um, also grab some salt and pepper, we'll give it a little bit of a, um, a bit of a, you know, salt peppering as well, um, mashed potato I think I mentioned is really yummy um, with this on top of mash, you could do it on rice, you could do it on zoodles if you wanted to add some extra veg. You could do it just on its own, is how I have, you know, ate it the other night. It was just on nothing. It was just beautiful just by itself. Um, with those carrots and the chunk of the chicken and everything else as well. So we'll get into that. Okay, so I'm going to add now. Okay, so we're going to add tomato paste and we're going to add about three quarters of a cup of red wine. 
Now it doesn't really need any more red wine than that because you don't want to make it too um, liquidy either. So let's just scrape the sides of that down. Like so. So did there, is anyone that's on here join us for the baking class on Saturday? And if you did, have you made it? The dough yet? Have, and what did, how did it go? Because I want to see your photos. I'd love you to sort of all share. I did put some photos up of the scrolls um, before and after as well. Um, so you can have a look at those. And it's just on the Magic Mix side again. So that's just the red wine and the tomato. Now I am going to add that to, for two minutes again. And I'm going to, and that's just going to just take that sort of the, the alcohol out of it a little bit. So it's just going to get that flavour starting to mix through, and it's just going to burn off that. Um, that so it's not, you know, you can drive if you're a pig later after you've eaten, you should be fine. Okay, so we'll pop that over there, and then we're going to get ready to pop in our chicken stock um, and our chicken. Okay. Now I also do have beans, so we're going to add the beans about five minutes into the cooking time. If you wanted to add mushrooms, mushrooms is also a really nice thing to add to this. So by all means, if you want to add um, some mushrooms, go ahead and do that as well. And we're still going to just leave that on three. Everything's still staying together beautifully. But we are going to drop the speed and we're going to pop it down to 1A once we've got the chicken in. So we'll get all that mixed in over those couple of minutes. Um, so don't forget, to, oh, that's another thing that we're looking at doing. Um, and so keep an eye out for it. We're going to look at doing um, some staples, so doing a class of doing some, you know, things like your mayonnaise and your pestos. But I'd really love to know what sort of staples, you know, household daily things that you use, would you actually like to see us cook um, and make and, and show you how to do it? So please feel free to let us know um, here as well what sort of staples you'd love to learn how to do and, you know, just to get that confidence to be able to do them yourself as well. So we'd love to know what it is that you want to see. Now I'm just checking everything is staying together beautifully. You might want to come in and have a little look at how it is all coming together. But I'm not losing any um, shape or anything with that stirring. It's just going through beautifully. And we're going to drop that down in just a moment as the time ticks off. We're going to drop that down to speed uh, 1A, as I mentioned. Okay, so we mustn't have long to go now. Okay. I wish I was just that little bit taller. Maybe I should wear heels. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put the cap back on for the rest of the process. So I'm just going to pop it on now, just so I don't forget to do that. And we're going to add a couple of cups. Now, have I shown you the trick? I've lost my lead. I'm just going to shake my stuff. Uh, the trick of not making your your these Tetra packs splash everywhere. I think I have, but I'm going to show you again, just in case you didn't see it. So if you pour it so that it is at the top rather than down here. So I used to always do it from down here. It was my now 14 year old that alerted me to the fact that I was doing it wrong. So if you stir, if you pour that way, it doesn't splash everywhere. Look at that. So much easier. Just makes sense. Why didn't I not know that? And if you didn't, you do now. So we're going to add a couple of cups of our chicken stock. Yum. It is smelling amazing. Please, if you are cooking along with us now, tell me what you're thinking of how amazing this is smelling in your kitchen. So, I'm going to add now my chicken. So, I've just done some chicken thigh fillets and I've just chopped those up. So, you can see my sort of pieces are sort of three, four centimetre pieces. I didn't do it too small. Um, if you if you wanted to do larger, you can. Obviously, you just need to check as it's cooking that it's actually cooking properly. So we'll just pop all of that in beautifully like that. And I'm going to also pop in my corn flour. So we'll just get that in there, and that'll just stir itself in beautifully. Okay, done. And I'll pop the lid on now. I'm going to just set this for five minutes because I want to remember to put my beans in. So it's going to take about 15, but I am going to set it for five just so that I remember to put them in because nothing worse than getting to the end and they're not there. 
We're gonna drop that down to one A, so that that's just going to stir every couple of minutes for about 10 seconds. So we'll get that going. I'm just gonna grab a cloth and clean up after myself, because I actually make a mess, you all know that, those that watch me regularly. Okay, so we'll pop that all in there. Okay, so I did, did I mention that this one actually does freeze really well as well. So if you're cooking along with me tonight and you know, you don't really need to serve for six people, um, then it does freeze really, really easily as well. So it's a nice one to be able to have in the freezer. I always like to overcook um, when I'm doing things like um, spaghetti bolognese. I always do a kilo of mince and just freeze it in batches because it just makes life so much easier on those nights that you've worked all day or you've homeschooled all day or you've cooked all day and you want to actually not cook anymore at night. Um, I also do... Um, my uh, lasagnas in batches as well and I'll do it if I'm going to make a lasagna I'll do two or three of them at the same time pop them into the freezer so this is another really good backup one that you can have popped into the freezer ready to go you know pull it out when you know the morning of um, so that you're ready to go or that evening and defrost it in the microwave as we do so that's always good as well um, and I'm going to add some salt and pepper when I add the beans as well I was going to already do that but I forgot so I'll do it in a second so I'll add that in and we'll get that cooking. Um, so the smell is amazing, and I always say I wish they had smell vision because if you could smell what was going on in here right now, um, you would definitely want to be doing that. So um, I, you could also do this with chicken breast if you liked, but it just gets a little bit dry. Um, so I do like cooking things like casserole type things with um, the thigh fillets. Just make sure you trim them down so that they're um, you know not so fatty either. Um, so yeah, so we've got that in there and, and it's just going to give it that beautiful sort of, you know, moister sort of chicken um, that we've got in there as well. Um, so I'm just going to get ready to add my beans and then we're going to cook it for another 10 minutes and that's about all it took. So it was about a 15 minute cooking time with that chicken in. Again, depending on the size um, of the chicken as well would depend on, you know, how long it's going to take for you as well. So um, we've got, for anyone that has, um, got the app. If you're having trouble getting onto the app, you need to re-download the app. And I'll show you in just a minute once I get the beans and get it going. Um, but the app has um, changed. We are There are some recipes that aren't on there at the moment, which were some of the ones that Rose and I um, especially had been adding. And I think Sarah might have added some recipes as well on there. We are working on getting those back on for you as well. So we can put these recipes that we do with our cook-alongs on there for you as well. Uh, we will put the, um, the method and everything on there for this one. So if you're not cooking live with us tonight, you don't have to madly make notes. You can actually just um, go back and have a look at the, the ingredients and the method once we put it up there for you as well. So it makes it nice and easy for you to get back to these recipes. So if you're looking at Facebook and you're looking for you know, one of our, our recipes in particular, if you just go along the top and you actually click on um, videos, then you'll find all the videos that we've done over the over the time as well. So we want to be able to um, make sure that when we're doing these things that you can go back to them as well. So I know sometimes even when I do them, I go, oh, what was that one I made that time? And I have to sort of go back and have a look at in my notebook. This is my notebook. Um, as to what exactly I did and, you know, all of that. Because it's hard to remember everything all the time. Um, so we're going to get that ready to go. We must be close to our five minutes, maybe. Sort of not, don't know, are we? I need to learn some really good jokes, but I tend to be a bit naughty when I tell jokes, so maybe that's not what I should do while I'm on <laughs> talking to you all. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to get this going and then we'll get on and I'm going to show you what the app now looks like when you actually go to download that. So we don't have long now, do we? Oh, less than a minute. See, I can talk. Um, less than a minute, we're going to add our beans. So for those that missed the start, we used the food processor. We sliced the, the shallots at, uh, on the two millimeter slicing blade straight into the large uh, food processor bowl. We then changed the blade to the four millimeter to slice the carrot and the um, cucumber. Carrot and celery, because we wanted it a little bit thicker. And then we put all three of those things into the pot with some um, olive oil, and we fried that off. We then added some garlic and some thyme, cooked that for a couple of minutes. We then added our tomato paste and red wine, cooked that off for a couple of minutes um, just to get that, that wine cooked off. And then we've added our chicken and our stock. So 
I set it for five minutes for cooking so that I can then add the beans, which we're just about to do any second now. Um, and then we'll get it going for the last 10 minutes. So I can see that that chicken, you can come and have a look. Oh, it smells amazing. But you can see that that chicken after even just five minutes is actually starting to cook. So you can tell that it's not going to take a huge amount of time. Now you can also see, as I mentioned, if you want to come back in here, I have really pushed the 2.5 litre food capacity. So you can just see it there and probably won't after I add the beans. But it is a really great... Um, size to be able to do a nice decent meal for quite a number of people so obviously it depends how big the eaters are in your household um, and I'm just going to then get to my iPad as well grab that in just a sec okay so if you want to come in we're going to set that now exactly the same everything we'll leave it on 1a and we're just going to pop that on now for 10 minutes and then Dinner should be ready. Okay. I'll just give a little tidy up here just for a second. Hopefully somebody unpacked my dishwasher today. You should see the face that I'm getting from behind the camera right now. I think it's a oops face. Do you have children that you make unpack the dishwasher and they forget a lot? Anyway, household problems. Okay, so the app. I need to show you the change. Okay, so you might have to come in here and have a look. Hopefully you can see it. So the Magic Mix app now is this little one down here. The difference is the little dashes on the side with the blue. So if anyone's had, having trouble getting into the app, it's because we've changed it and this is the new one. Okay, I think that the old one might even tell you to go into this. I can't remember because it was a while ago that I did it. Um, so when we're going into our app, you can see that we've then got everything in there. So a lot of people would prefer to look through a cookbook, but then other people would prefer to actually, you know, have something like this. I love um, just being able to sit on the lounge in the evening and scroll through things that I'm thinking of making. You can make little notes in, in here. You can give, give them, you know, five-star ratings if you love them. Um, you can do, you know, all of your ingredients, you can add to your shopping list. There's so many things that you can do in the app um, when you're going to actually do um, everything here. So, I noticed that there's one there called ice cream now, and I'm sure that wasn't there in the last one. And I will tell you that the mango, uh, mango and ginger ice cream is to die for. The peach sorbet, I had never noticed before. I don't know whether that was a new one, so I need to try that one. Um, and the Nutella banana ice cream oh my gosh so again you can look at getting rid of your ice cream maker if you've got one by actually going on um, you know by having you cook expert as well so it's another great way to be able to do these things and the ice creams are done um, like the peach and the banana is just done with frozen fruit that's going to be eaten um, when you're done so it's a great way to be able to have fresh you know healthy desserts well that still is healthy um, hazelnuts are good for you I think um, but it's a really great way to have really quick, easy desserts that are going to be good for you in a way as well. So that's um, that there. So there's lots of things in there. Um, there's lots of recipes. We'd love for you to be able to, um, you know, share what you've done. So if you are using um, the recipes in the app, we'd love your feedback on the recipes there as well. Uh, a lot of the ones that, um, or all of the ones that are in the cookbook that you get with your machine, are recipes that have come from France um, and not all of them are sort of quite Australianized as, as potentially you would like them but you know if, you've, if you're trialing things and testing things let us know what you're doing or how you've tweaked it or you know what you've done differently um, and hopefully we'll be able to get the app so that you can all sort of you know add you know different things uh, in terms of recipes and things as well which would be great again because we have had that in the past so as soon as that's up and happening again we'll make sure we let you know um, I love that the um, app also tells us, you know, how many people it's going to feed. It gives you, um, you know, your cal calories and your fat. These are the ones that the France ones have done. I really don't know how I would calculate all of that if I had to do it for my own recipes. That's maybe something I need to look at. Um, but yes, yeah, so how many people it will feed, what instruments and gadgets and things you're going to be using as well. So 
make sure, just let us know what you want to see. So um, if you missed earlier, I was talking about how we're going to do something on staples and I'd love to know what sort of staples, give us a list, you know, of all the things that you'd like to see. We'll try to get through as many of them as we can. But we'd love you to be able to have a look, um, you know, think about the things you use every day. So in my household, it's definitely mayonnaise. So that's something that they use most days. Um, and it's something that you can make so easily on, on your own. I have had quite a few people say that they have trouble making it. So that's why we want to be able to make sure that we show you how to do that. If you go back to some of the recipes we've done, I know I did a shredded chicken taco burger, which is the only thing in this house my children know how to make. Um, but there is me making the mayonnaise in that one as well, so that makes it nice and easy for you. So make sure you jump on um, and you have a look at that as well. We've got TVSN coming up again in September. So we've got three shows in September. And I know that a lot of you do like to watch that for some ideas of, of things to do, you know, new ways, all of that as well. So, and it really is, I know that a lot of our um, stores out there actually do watch it so that they're really well trained when they're talking to people about the machine. Uh, so, you know, if, you, if you're looking for some new ideas of things to cook, our next one is the 6th of September. It's a Monday and it's on at 12.30. So it's going to be way more interesting than the Channel 7 midday movie. Way more exciting. And you're going to learn a lot more than you are in a Channel 7 midday movie, let me tell you. So, you know, hopefully you can join us. We'd love you to jump on um, and watch that as well. Uh, and send in your... What I really love with TVSN is that people can comment live. So send in... You know your feedback and things send in you know messages to us so that we can you know while we're there that we get those as well um, if you love your machine and you want to give it a rating you can do that there as well so I think it's really great that um, people hear about how amazing our machines are from people that are actually using them not people like us who worked for the company so I think that it's really important um, that we share with everybody how much we love I think everybody in my family now owns one of these because they just were like, wow, she's just what she's making all the time is amazing and we feel left out. So we're going to make sure we get one of those. Um, and so, yeah, so it's something that I think lots of people, word of mouth. And I think that we do have a unique machine um, and an amazing machine that we really do want to share with everybody out there as well. So I think, um, yeah, that would be great. So spread the word, get people excited. Um, you know, eventually when we can entertain again, you're going to have a wealth of knowledge of what to cook because you're going to have done so much research while you've um, been in lockdown, if you are in lockdown. And for those that aren't in lockdown, I'm jealous a little bit, just I have to be honest, but that's okay. We'll all get there eventually and we're all in this together and I know um, that we're working there, so loving it. Okay, right, we mustn't have much longer to do now, we must have just a few minutes. So we're nearly there. Um, and I, you might want to actually come in and have a little look again because, oh wow, it is looking, and I love, I don't know how well you can see it, but I love those colours of the orange and the green and then that beautiful red wine sauce in there and that amazing chicken. So hopefully it is cooked in the next couple of minutes because it's smelling amazing. So I'll put that back on. Um, oh, just turn that off. Okay. That's all good. It's going again. I just flipped the lid. Um, if you wanted to cook it a little bit quicker, you could actually um, up the temperature as well. So if you want to up the temperature, you could actually up the temperature to around the 120 if you wanted to. So depending on how quickly you wanted it to be cooked, you know, it just gives it that. I think sometimes the slower you cook things, um, like a chicken, the, the sort of more tender and, and the, the more moist it is. But, you know, if you're sort of in a hurry, let's get it done. And you're going to eat it that night anyway. Then you can always up that temperature just a little bit. So we're nearly there. We're almost finished. Um, and I just can't wait to eat. I think my neighbours are already knocking on the door. Or licking the door. I can hear something at the door. <laughs> okay. So not long. Let's get all this ready, actually. I could have washed up in that 10 minutes or 15 minutes, couldn't we? So you could actually have dinner done and the kitchen clean before dinner's done and you haven't had to go back and stir it or do anything which I think is amazing. That's one of the beauties of a machine like this. So that is really, really nearly ready. We're nearly there. Don't forget, download that app if you haven't already downloaded it. 
Um, don't forget to tell us what staples there is that you would love for us to show and make and teach you how to do. Um, if you missed the baking uh, one that I did on Saturday, it is on there, so you can go back to that. If you did watch it, you could also get all of the recipe, like the, the recipe and the three um, methods of the three things that we made, so the pizza base. Um, I'll give you, if anyone that's doing pizza base, my biggest tip is, once you've actually rolled out your dough and it's, you know, in your circle and it's on your pizza tray, I pop it in the oven for about five minutes to actually start the baking process of just the base. And then when you pull it out and then put all your ingredients on it, when you go to cut your pizza, it's nice and crispy. So it just gives it that extra little bit, you know, you don't have to worry about it being soggy or anything like that. The best tip I ever was given was to pre-bake that pizza base. Also too, if um, one of my neighbours actually, I gave him a couple of pizza bases and I pre-baked it and he's popped it into the freezer. So they know that um, they'll pull that out when they're ready to have pizza. So a really great way to freeze it as well. A lot easier than, um, you know, that soft dough and then the cling wrap stuck to it and it's a bit annoying. So beautiful, amazing. I loved it. It was so good. Okay, we must be very nearly there. Look at that. Okay. Come on down. Oh, gosh, this totally looks cooked to me. Okay, look at that. I hope yours is smelling and looking just as amazing as this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, so we're going to serve that up. I'm just going to check that chicken because I'm not eating raw chicken. No, absolutely. Look at that. That chicken is cooked. Can you see that? It's absolutely perfectly cooked in there. So you can see, I'm not making it up. It cooked in 15 minutes, I promise you. So, dishing that up. Oh, look, funnily enough, it looks exactly like the picture that we put on Facebook to give you all the recipe, the ingredients and everything. Isn't that funny? Because I did pre-test it to make sure it was amazing. So, there we have our beautiful... See, you don't even need anything under that, honestly. It's got enough vegetables and everything, but if you need that little bit of extra, then you um, mash potato or something under that. But that is absolutely amazing. It is so tasty and so beautiful. We hope that you enjoyed tonight's um, cook-along. And you know what? Again, we're done in less than 40 minutes, but in that 40 minutes, I did talk a lot. Um, but you can have dinner on the table very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this one. We really loved having you. We'll be back probably in a couple of weeks. Keep an eye out for our next one, which we're going to look at doing the staples. Um, and again, if you want to give us some feedback on what staples that you would like us to teach you, um, then by all means, please actually jump on, tell us now. We'd love to know. But thanks again for joining us and we really enjoyed having you and doing this for you. Stay safe.